The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. We're at Crop Diagnostic School here at uh, Carmen, Manitoba, joined by John Hurd, Soil Fertility Specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. At least that was his title the last time I talked to you, John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> quite the visual demonstration behind us here on what happens with nitrogen as it moves through the atmosphere after, or through the environment after we apply it in the field. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we've decided that people were bored to death of seeing the nitrogen cycle the way it's normally put together. So we have an actual uh, moving parts nitrogen cycle uh, that uh, we set up because really we need to lay the groundwork for uh, the, these dealing with nitrous oxide. And it's important to show the checks and balances. I'll just switch a, a knob. There, there are knobs here that control various losses and gains. And uh, some of these are practices that farmers can employ. But the big thing that we like to show is the leaky pipe. Uh, in the past, what we were concerned about is the nitrogen losses due to ni N2 gas. This is agronomic, but the thing we got to talk about are the things that are not agronomic, but environmental. That's the N2. And when I went to school, we didn't know that happened. Only with instrumentation, new instrumentation, do we have that. So the little bit of N2O gas that we lose through this leaky pipe, that's what you know, magnifies, we said here with 100 pounds of N per acres, like 460 pounds CO2 equivalent. So that all of a sudden puts a little bit of impetus on understanding how this works and how these knobs, uh, by using different practices, can slow down and, and do a better job of controlling uh, nitrous oxide losses. Those knobs, depending on where they are, would be different types of nitrogen release inhibitors, slow inhibitors release ESN. Or practices like banding fertilizer or applying to soils that are cold and going to freeze in the fall, things like that. Because once it gets to this end as nitrate, then, you know, uh, denitrification and leaching, uh, they, they can happen. And uh, uh, there's not a lot we could do other than, you know, tile drainage or improved drainage, things like that. Yeah. There's also this component behind me. This is the mineralization. This is what's tied up in the ground. Th 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 this one's neat. This is the one no one understands. It's the black box. We should paint it black. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we like to show how uh, initially, you know, poorly managed nitrogen uh, can go into that pool to uh, uh, break down straw and stuff like that. And we say by uh, banding fertilizer, we can minimize the amount that's immobilized and, and 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 so not have that drain on things but ultimately straw breaks down and then we get mineralization but we have to wait for that and that's also where if we saw a reduction in fertilizer applied we would be able to get by a few years probably with most uh, crops that's what the data that, right? shows us is that that kind of buffers uh uh, things uh, and we have data. You know, some people think the way we reach the reach the 30% reduction is by only put on 70% fertilizer, and we see that that's a short-term approach. And data that worked pretty good for the first three years, and then the wheels fall off. So that's uh, uh, a very short-sighted, naive, non-nitrogen thinking way uh, of dealing with nitrous oxide. Okay. Ultimately, though, it comes back to that leaky pipe over there and, and yeah, 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 that, preventing the releases. It's only there. a pound per acre. Agronomically insignificant. I never cared about that until, well, two weeks ago when I actually got the formula and found out it's 460 pounds of CO2 equivalent. So now I care a bit more. And that's also what policymakers care about right now, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they're going to hold farmers' feet to the fire. Because th this loss here, this is six times greater than the emissions from the fertilizer companies making that nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Some people think that we're just going to punish the fertilizer companies, but no, they can pass those costs on to the farmers. Uh, uh, I think the farmers are, 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 are going to deal with this. The good news is we, we've already got management that does that. We, we've already got management up our sleeve that'll meet and surpass the target. Well, and that's on display in the plots. Why don't we head over there, John? 
John, right now there is certainly a lot of discussion and focus on reducing emissions from nitrogen fertilizer, uh, certainly a federal mandate on, on that. What do we know in terms of the, the tools already available to farmers that can reduce those emissions? Well, we're kind of lucky. we got some made in Manitoba numbers. They may not agree with the national numbers, but who cares when we know here, uh, and that's that's based on the work of largely Mario Tenuta, but I like the one over here beside me that shows that variable rate nitrogen is a winner. Uh, Aaron Glenn at Ag Canada Brandon's worked with their variable rate projects and found that by developing high management, high product productivity zones, fertilizing them with more nitrogen, low productivity zones, withholding nitrogen there, there, there are huge gains to be made in nitrous oxide. So, that, so that's the Ag Canada program at Brandon. But the others, Mario Tenuta's made a bit of a career of testing the other four R's. Uh, we have behind us a, a suite of nitrogen uh, enhanced efficiency fertilizers, uh, controlled release fertilizers like ESN, uh, uh, nitrification inhibitors like Entrench, and Super U. He's tested others also. And uh, we have a number. Uh, we've had a researcher here showing us how laborious it is to collect these numbers every day of the year growing season. I simply boil it down to a single number. I want to know what's the nitrous oxide reduction compared to that 462 pounds per acre CO2 equivalent. Uh, looks like there's lots of opportunity. Uh, split application has shown some good uh, uh, reductions in Manitoba. Uh, likewise for banding fertilizer is a winner. The one we have here that we don't have any data on is the biological end fixers uh, for cereals, canola, and corn. We, we, we simply don't know how effective they are. And then cropping systems, you know, putting pulses in your rotation. Uh, cover crops, you know, people know I'm kind of a cover crop heater last year when it was dry as a bone, but uh, uh, proven wrong because you have a wet year. That's when you kind of like to have a cover crop taking up your nitrogen and preserving it from being lost. So right now, government is also rolling out programming and, and funding at the farm level to adopt some of these practices. That's in conjunction at the same time as having this 30% reduction target in emissions by 2030. Is uh, that? Let's say it a different way. Okay, let's frame say, it how you... Let's say the feds have provided money to some associations to roll out programs. Yes. Out here in the West, the associations are the Manitoba Association of Watersheds, and they're rolling out money to farmers directed as the way they see fit. And the Canola Council of Canada is a similar rolling out money as they feel fit to farmers. Uh, government's hands off here. Okay, it's, it's, yeah. and, and the provincial yeah. government, we aren't even in the game. No. We, we're just providing solid agronomics. Yeah. Is that 30% target realistic based on what we, what you've found and what Mario has found with research yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario has found that uh, we can meet that quite readily. Uh, some of it's at additional cost. Some of these fertilizers cost more. But I think the the, the uh, uh, agronomists have been hoping that, on um, based on their agronomic merit, and we'll see in dry environments they they provide protection. We really don't need. We don't have a lot of losses. But this this past wet year a lot of these inhibited products should shine, or they better shine, because these are the conditions that they're designed to minimize losses under.